Okay, it's time to clean this up and put it all together. <coughs> and I've lined up the anatomy here, but there's lots of overlaps. And in order to play with it, I want to play with direct adjustments. So just like our landscape. So for the head, if I take the entire grouping folder, which has the individual layers that make up the head within it. And I go to image adjustments, you'll notice that direct adjustments aren't available to me. So one option I have is I can duplicate the whole layer by saying command J or the whole group. So I now have a head folder and then I have a head copy folder. And I'm gonna turn off the head folder and I'm going to right click on the head copy folder and I'm gonna say merge group. This is going to flatten them all into one layer. That's why I worked hard to do all the internal edges and just leave these outside edges. And that way I can go to image adjustments and it speeds it up a little bit and I can play with the levels just on their own. Limit the highlights a little bit. Limit the shadows somewhat. This is pretty much in the lighting range that I want though. Then I can go to image adjustments, color balance. I can shift it a little less warm. So it is fairly warm. And then I can go to hue saturation and I can really change it using the spectrum model. You know, if I like that more, <coughs> and then I can play with its actual intensity of color. So maybe take the saturation down a little bit. Those are options with direct adjustments. You know, moving from this to this, that I have instead of having to do it to each component layer. Now before I, I do that with the body, there are some things I need to, to start transitioning immediately. So you can also do direct adjustments individually. So for these spikes on the back, I can push their levels, I can push their mid-tones, it's always where we start, and brighten them up. I can limit the highlight a little bit. I can limit the shadow a little bit. You see how that really brightens them up. Just with levels, from there to there. Then I can play with the color balance, which is the color temperature. And I can push this a little bit warmer, like the, the armadillo shell I plan to merge it with. But I don't want to push it too far in any one direction, right? Because I want to have the pixel variety. So I'm just going to play with midtones. And then I could play with saturation. But I don't see too much need to. So I'll give it a little bit more of a kick. You don't really want to play with the lightness and darkness in saturation, hue saturation because you, you handle that better with levels. Because here it's a little bit too blunt a tool. Okay, now because I have that coloring, I can go to the layer behind it, click on that layer, and I can adjust those colors and push them a little bit closer. So I can darken the midtones a little bit. I can limit the highlights, limit the shadows. I can go to color balance and shift the temperature a little bit cooler, a little bit more towards the greens and away from the magentas.
You see, that makes a big difference before I even start blending and erasing and getting these two textures and colors to feel like they're part of the same world. Now I can start erasing from the layer on top. I'm going to use a soft edged eraser and I'm going to start with 100% opacity. And I'm using a stylus, but you can do this with a mouse as well. A stylus just gives you pressure sensitivity. And that 100% opacity, I'm going to take out that hard edge. I might turn the head on just so I see that there's plenty of overlapping. Now that I've gotten rid of the hard edge, I can go down to a lower opacity and I can start slowly building these textures together. Like you're blending a sky. And it kind of works. But what if you really like strong textures? Taking out the opacity is going to make them weaker and weaker. So it a new tool we're going to use is called Clone Stamp. And what Clone Stamp does, it's underneath the brush tool, is it allows you to copy a texture within the same layer. Now, I don't like to do it within the same layer. I like to build a new layer on top of the layer I'm trying to affect. And then I'll set Clone Stamp not to work on the current layer, but to work on the current layer and below. So the way this works is I choose Clone Stamp. I choose a brush just like if it were an eraser that's nice and big and soft, 0% hardness. But I'm going to start with a lower opacity. I'm going to start around 50%. And then I hover where I want to copy the texture from. So let's say I want to copy the texture of these scales. I hold down my option, my alt key or my option key, and I press, and that will target it. And then it will preview. I just start painting. And it's like the opposite of a soft eraser. It will start painting that texture in. And I'm not over painting over any existing layers because I'm, I'm doing this on its own layer. So that's what it looks like with clone stamp. That's what it looks like without it. And I can work it both ways. I can also copy some of these hairs into it. But that's the same as kind of softening overall. And remember you have a history. You can always go back and adjust it. So clone stamp is going to be really helpful as we finish things off, but especially when we transition from one, one uh, biological texture to another. And it can even be done at full opacity. So here I'm going to sample some of these spikes. And let's say I want to just build more spikes. I can do that. And start angling them up to around the head. This is a 100% clone stamp. And it works really well for creatures and organic material. Now that's all on a separate layer. So I'll usually label that layer. I'll call it clone stamp and then I'll usually mark it red. Because you can also erase away from it. Either with a low opacity or with a full opacity eraser. Okay. And then with the armadillo belly right there, I need to erase away at 100% the hard edge. It's kind of this back shell I'm giving my creature.
And then I'm going to play with the color of the, the squirrel fur I have underneath. So I find that reference right there. And I'm going to play with its adjustments. First with levels. Let's darken it very slightly. Limit its highlights a little bit. Limit its, uh, darken its shadows a little bit. You can always check with your history if you like what those changes did. Then my favorite is color balance really matters. It's not the color of the thing itself, what's called local color. It's, it's adjusting the, the temperature of the lighting. So you're trying to make the lighting match on everything. And you can adjust it for midtones, for highlights, and for shadows. I want a little bit more red in the shadow, maybe a little bit more blue in the shadow. And again, you can use your history to see if it makes a difference that helps, and it does. I'm also going to get rid of this tail. I don't need that anymore from that layer. So I'm going to be using something like this. Now the same thing with the arm. Remember this was internally composited? So it's a different reference. Image adjustments, levels. I'm gonna darken it, but I don't want it so dark that it doesn't catch the light anymore. And maybe I don't want to do it overall. Maybe I want to do it, adjust its light and darks with a direct tool like the burn tool. Midtone, 16%, big soft brush. Worked on a bit of a delay there. It's pretty heavy handed. So something like that. Now the breastplate, uh, working on the level adjustments there, obviously it's, it's too bright. So I can darken the midtones. I can also limit the highlights. Then I go to color balance, push it a lot cooler. It feels like it's all the same creature. Push it a little bit more towards the pinks. And then this is going to need some burning as well. And I think for the arm, I want to do some blending, just erasing away. You have to make sure you're on the right layer. So I'm going to use auto select for layer here, just to make sure I'm on the right one. I'm going to soften some of that fur at the edge. And then I can always burn it down if it's too bright and even burn the highlights, the light touch. Put a little bit of a shadow on that side. All right. What layer is this? 